Good morning, how are you doing? It's uh, the captain's private lesson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lesson what? Goodness me, I'd, I've lost count now. Lesson um, something that I'll look up later yes. on. Yes. Um, uh, it's only been a couple of weeks, actually. Yes, we're, it's been good this time. On. It feels and, uh, like back in the summer, life is less hectic. So uh, That's a good uh, thing. Yeah. Been playing well away from Black Friday and yes. Christmas bonanzas. Play, playing quite a lot, which is good. Uh, jamming lots with uh, Pete and Rob, which yeah. is good. Playing noodling in my office, trying to do stuff on Facebook and Instagram. But yes, if last time we had this idea of playing major, follow, following the chords the chord. in a 145. Yeah. And you know either playing major over the whole lot um or over each chord making the changes yeah. yeah or mixing and playing you know major over the one uh, uh minor pentatonic over the four mm -hmm. and and then whatever you want over the yes. five perfect not how did you find not that literally whatever you want it's i i have a natural sense i think for when to make the change so right. that's not Great. difficult um i uh I still need to play shapes, right? So you know, things that like I'll, I'll go. I kind of know E. I'll go. Uh -huh. I'll know there's a shape there, or I might want to go because I know there's a shape there. Yeah. I'm sort of. I'm not as familiar with where the shapes are as I would be if we were just playing blue minor pentatonic. Yes. Everywhere. But okay. but I I know it's just a. It's like it's a stupid mental block because all the shapes are the same. They're just somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, if that even makes no, sense. No, I, I know but, what you mean. You know. Great. So I'm, I'm kind of, I mean, that's, that's good. Awesome. It's all good. And it definitely, um, it's a great, because it, it's sort of, it wasn't anything that was massively, complicated to learn from a technique uh -huh. you know it's not like like trying yeah, to learn yeah. legato uh -huh. it's just it's just about the brain going yeah just just do that lick that's easy to do but just do it here rather than here yes you know it's like so and it's there's a little bit i think you know when we're doing videos at anderton's and it's like the pressure's on and it's just like a jam starts whatever I, you know and it's there's like don't cock this up lee mm -hmm. because then we've got to film it all again there is a little bit of revert to type still. That's, that's um, normal. It's, yeah, that's it's normal. normal. I, yeah. And I just think the more jamming off camera that I yeah. do, the more it, there's no that's, pressure to get well, it no, wrong. And, and then you'll, it'll become natural yes. feeling enough that yeah. it will happen in the pressure yeah. situation because you'll be totally confident enough to use yeah. it. Because that's, it's almost like that's the way it should be. You can yeah. if you're doing a session, mm. a like a recording session, you can mm. experiment as much as you like because you can always hit stop. Yeah. But particularly when we're filming or you're filming, yeah. there is a certain amount of pressure yeah. to try and get it right that you it's, don't have to just do it hundred times. It's definitely yeah. interesting, you know, when you when you you talk to lots of you know you talk to successful guitar players and they'll tell you about their formative years and they'll just go, I just used to go to jam nights and mm -hmm. we just and, and you go, you can so see that there's only so much that you can realistically learn just in an isolated, mm -hmm. just, pre you know, until, until you're just going like, right, there's people watching the whole band is do, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. do it right. Uh -huh. You know, that's just, you can imagine that just being like insane. But Anyways, you have, that was, but you have to do all of those people. I'm sure were doing a lot of practice. Absolutely. Of the things. Yeah. Um, I know that, uh, a friend of mine is friends with Mike Stern. Yeah. And he caught, he was in Australia, this in Australia and he called my friend Simon up and said, um, you know, I've got a day off. Can you, can we get together and have a jam? And Mike had licks written out that he'd worked out and he wanted to practice them with That's somebody great, in a yeah. jam. So literally he, uh, Simon went to his hotel room, they practiced together and he was running these, yeah. not, not, not like yeah. playing the lick over, but trying to use it in a real yep. way to get it so it would yeah you know so it's not like it's something beginners do that guy's one of the yeah. best jazz guys around he's been doing it for yeah. forever and, and i i, I even see know. that even watching uh pete hanore play you know he'll you know he's got a new lick and he sort of shoehorns it in a bit and uh -huh. but and sometimes it just it's like oh they didn't i mean it's quite rare that you'll ever hear him play anything and just go, uh -huh. that, that was a total car yeah, crash. Yeah. But you'll sort of, he'll be, you know, he'll just be finding, oh yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like an over, almost over like weeks somehow. Mm -hmm. You, But anyway, so that was, that was the first thing that I've spent a reasonable amount of time doing. The other one was just that the, 
I'm yeah, going okay. to cock that. That's all right. But, and I'm, I'm trying to decide, you, you showed me this sort of rolling. Yeah. Rolling finger technique. Yeah. And I'm, I think I'm doing more of the string muting by lifting off rather that's than fine. just a straight that's, roll. That's okay. So I'm wondering whether it's going to bite me on the bum in terms of speed, but you know. Ah. You're doing it exactly right, because what's, right. what's happening is, and the reason I had to show it to you with a really big movement is because if I made the smallest, the smaller movement, yeah. you wouldn't have seen what it right. was. But you're exactly, do you can't see it now because the movement is so small, it's sm but that's yeah. exactly what okay. you want. The movement should yeah. be small. It's just when you first learn it, you have to exaggerate it to teach yeah. your fingers the right it's, technique. It's so also great. quite hard to, I don't, uh, I don't think what's happening is so when I'm practicing it and I'm consciously doing it mm -hmm. I'm not then when I'm just playing normally I'm not consciously trying to do it so I th I'm hoping what's happening is just subliminally the practice will just kick in yes. and just make it it will it, so uh, yeah at the moment you'll still have to think about trying to play those notes that are next to each other because it's unlikely you will have done it enough for the fingers to just naturally be doing that but they will the other thing that will really help with that is uh, learning some licks that yes. use that. Yeah. So once you've learned some licks that use that kind of thing, then they'll yeah. happen. Uh, and that was one of the things that we had last week. The reason, if you remember, we were looking at a particular sequence where I said, oh, you can't do the rolling yet, so we need to not do this sequence yeah. now. Let's learn rolling, which you've yeah. done now, yeah. so we can now have a look at that pattern of four. Yeah. Did you practice the pattern of three with the legato? That we had that one that went... Um, <laughs> I didn't, and you're right. I think we did talk about that, but I haven't really spent uh, I a, uh, a bit. But so that was the. That's it. That? Nearly. So think of it going down three notes from each one. So from that one, from that one, from that one, from that one, that one. That's it. So, yeah, but it's it's doing. No, but here, just stop for one second. Now, I just want to explain something that I haven't filmed them yet. But after our lesson, I was yeah. like, I should have lessons on these. How am I going to teach it? So I sat down to try and think about the best path through this and how actually I use it and mistakes I made when I was learning it. Right. And one of the things that I really notice is that I very very rarely use these kind of patterns on the thick strings. And also, your hand position changes when you go to the thick string. So, yeah. like on that particular one, you were, you were doing it the same as me, which would be going... But here, you have to suddenly... Yeah. Thumb has to sneak around the, the, the back, and then you... And yeah. I never used that down there, ever. Right. So I started trying to debate what the best way of doing it. And if you stick on the thinnest four strings, you mm. don't have that hand shift. Okay. It feels a little bit more natural. And actually in most of the cases, it makes for a cooler mm. sounding lick. So if you stop that one here and have... Now you've got it. And that's a kind of a lick that you could use more it, or less right away. It's so weird. I don't know if anyone else will relate to this, but... I still, in my head, I'm using the the root note on the thick E string as, uh -huh. al as almost like the, the sort of like my baby pacifier, or, right. or no, that's maybe that's the wrong one. But so I'm, you know, I'll play a lot of licks. So I'll start off. Yeah. Hit, but not. I mean, I don't. I actually do quite like the sound of it. Although I, I, I know again, Pete will say in the, in a band context, these these notes are harder to hear than these notes. Yep. So just like avoid. It's not just that they're harder to hear; they muddy the flavour. Yes, up with with the rhythm parts, but as well, they sound mm. beginnery. Well, it, I, I, I can't no, think but, of another I, word, but it's just like it's so. But I, I'm realizing the light bulb. You know, not light bulb moment, but I've just got to train my brain because, of course, if I know that. I, I, you know, here's where I need to. Equally, so here's yeah, yeah, the yeah. same. <laughs> it's, so it's yeah. just like, come on, Anderson, just like 
just start looking the, the top re, down the, re, the reason up. that we look at the bottom one is because it's where we see the chords and the first yeah. bar chords that we learn and the scales yeah. we all everyone starts from the, the thicker string it's probably one of the things I'm going to change when I start redoing my beginner stuff is teaching scales starting from the thinner string going down first and then up it kind of goes against conventional wisdom but it might help with starting to see where those root notes are so um Let's have a little try at doing yeah, now try, that pattern. That, so the, th the trick, the, the trick, Lee. Hang on, before you do it, the trick is doing it slowly. Yeah. And I, it was like one of the th the comments that people were taking the piss out of last time was I was trying to go Lee slower, and you'd slow it like five percent, but you need to slow it like fifty percent. I, I absolutely swear to you, if you practice the things really slowly yeah. a couple of times, you'll go from like twenty percent speed to 50% speed really quickly, whereas yeah. if you start at 50% speed, yeah. then it'll, it's really slow going, right? I'll, so I'll do my best. Start on the thinner string. Yeah. That's it, and you're gonna go, just think down three notes. And what are we doing legato on this, all of it? Or We're just the- Always, just the always three, doing a flick one, off sorry. where we can. Right, okay. Because obviously on this first one, you can go pick, flick, pick. You have to pick the next one. Pick, flick. Flick, pick, pick. That's it. Da, 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 da. Finish there. That's oh, it. Right, okay, so oh, and that's what you're saying about. That's what I'm saying. Just, Don't worry about going right, to those okay. thicker strings. Particularly, not just this pattern, because of, of course, eventually you want to do it in all of the patterns. Mm. But if you start going like here, in, into this, you know, pattern two, <laughs> you get it. You can do it, but mm. it's just like no one does that. So why spend loads of time practicing the things yeah. that you're not actually probably going to use? Yeah, that's kind of where I've yeah, yeah. I've changed my attitude a bit from when I was a teenager. I thought that you should practice everything every which way yeah. in the extreme. Now I'm getting older. I'm like I have less time to practice. Probably everyone else has li limited time as well. Why practice the the full extreme when you're never going to use it? Practice the bit that you might actually really yeah. use, and it becomes real yeah. practical. I, I I do think. You know, I, I do think that has, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, in some instances, unravel 25, 30 mm -hmm. years worth of doing something. But I, I can absolutely see, you know, if I, I, I need to become, you know, I need to become just as comfortable knowing where all the shapes are, everything on these top three strings as I kind of sort of am on the bottom mm -hmm. three strings. But whatever, that'll come. That'll, 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 that'll come. That'll come, but you yeah. need to be, it won't come if you never work on it. Mm. So it's one, if you want to know the notes on the fretboard, which are, you know, and, and know them really well. I'm sure I gave you that little exercise where you're doing like C, C, yeah, yeah, C, yeah. C, and then you just go through. It's a bit of a boring exercise, yeah. but if you stick to doing that for all of the white notes, so all of the yeah. C's, the G's, the F's, the D's, whatever, yeah. if you did it five minutes a day for a month, yeah. you probably know them all, and then you never have to learn them again, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but it's a slog, so I can... So let, let's do that yeah. legato thing, I guess. So, That, that's it, just finish on that. Da, da, oh, yeah. da, 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 da. Da, da. Nearly. Da, do, do, do. So the last one will be here. Da, do, do. Oh, right. Ba, and then you finish on do. That's the one. One more time. Ah. You continue. Down, that's it. Good. Okay. I'll tap it out for you. Before yeah, yeah. You no, I mean that's oh, one more time. <laughs> that's it. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Da, do, do, da. So if you're going to practice going, it, you so you got this yeah. one, two, three, two, three. Two, three. Or, or is well, that just you, like can, a, you can. You could do. 
if you wanted to. You can, it feels a little bit more... It feels yeah. harder, it, it's yeah. less... I'm sure Slash does a thing where he's like... Is it... Yeah. Is this another bearing? <laughs> Whatever it is. Yay. Sweet child of mine. Yeah, it's up there though. <laughs> Anyway. Um, yeah, that lick. It's a fantastic lick. There are lots of... There are hundreds of variations of these patterns. Yeah. H hundreds of them. Yeah. One of my favourite ones is like that slash one, where I do that same pattern of threes going up. So I, I'd go... That's cool. That's very cool. It's, it's my favourite of those little patterns. Yeah, that's patterns. very cool. So just do it slowly again, just like... So it's the same... It's exactly the same as doing this. Going down off each note, but instead of thinking down from that note, down from that note, down from that mm. note, down, I'm going down from this note, then down from this note, down from this note, down from this so, one. So it's exactly the same thing, just literally in reverse, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you got that's it. Cool. I got it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's a fun lick. Yeah. So I would. And the legato the bits, or the the, the pull-off bit, is really essential because of if you can't do that, you'll never get that kind yeah, of speed yeah, up. Exactly. Will you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, there are guys that can. There are great pickers pick that can pick that stuff, like Paul yeah. Gilbert or whatever. They right. could pick that stuff way faster than I could ever do at legato. Right. But okay. That requires a hell of a lot more yeah. dedication, focus on exactly how you're picking, pick yeah. motion, small, you know. Um, and I've never been very good at that picky, fast, mm -hmm. picky stuff. So I've always, if I have to play or want to play slightly yeah. faster, I have to resort yeah. to the legato thing. But there's, so there's two parts of this I want you to be aware of. One, you're much better off having a couple of patterns and really yeah. focusing on them and learning to use them yeah. rather than having, practicing loads of different ones at the same time. So I'd yeah. rather go, let's have two or three patterns that you're going to practice now. Uh, and then in two weeks time or three weeks time, I'll give you another pattern or I'll give you, because there's actually, with the rolling, there's some fantastic things you can do instead of just doing this. You can go down one, up the next, down one, up the next. And you yep. get a lot of that kind of modern Robin Forty sort of sounding. Yeah angular things which can be yeah. kind of cool but that's another one of those patterns so you you want to be aware are you, are you coming to our robin ford gig i can't remember if uh, can, I, can i plug it on this yes thing? you can give it a I plug okay yeah. eric gales on the, no uh, jared nichols next week eric gales the week after eric that gales robin ford the sure. week after that all on the anderson's website okay we'll plug yeah, excellent <laughs> uh, where are they g live or the, the, oh, the they're all uh, oh, no, no, uh jared and robin are at the harbour hotel and eric's at the electric theatre okay but uh, cool. they're, they're all ticket only events, so you have to yes. buy a ticket to, to turn up. So nice. Well, I'll, I'll try and or, I'll, or, I'll try and sneak or in. come on the guest <laughs> list. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, so you, the two patterns that you've got then to, for this week is going to be that th that yeah. one, the threes. Oh, I've done it in fours. Yeah. Da, da, boo, da, da. Then and then going up. Uh, Go from here. Oh, I see. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a nice. Cool. If you go from yeah. there, you've got yeah, yeah, that yeah. little ending part where you can yeah. put a bend on or go into a whatever yep. any other kind yep. of repeaty fancy yep. pants. Licks. So that's the two. But I'm okay, going to give fine. you one more. Okay, fine. And the reason I want to give you one more is mm -hmm. because it's using the rolling technique. And yeah. it's funnily enough, it's what you just said that you did by accident, which is fours. So that one's okay. threes. Mm -hmm. When you play threes, they're normally triplets. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Or mm -hmm. you can think of them as sextuplets, like six notes mm -hmm. per click. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how to speak or count that one. but it, it, So it's easy. for now, just think of it in terms of triplets, and we'll worry about um, sextuplets when you got it a bit faster. But groups of four are going to be 16th notes, so four notes per click. So that one again, starting on the thinnest mm -hmm. note, we do one, two, three, four. But now look, the next note that we want is uh, that one. So we'd have to do that roll. That's it. Roll, roll, excellent. 
that's it and you probably want to just fin again finish on that root so That's like five percent slow. I want you to get that. Okay. Da ya ba da da da. Still slower. Da ya. And I'm not. I've, I've just got to not pick as well, haven't I? Okay. <laughs> da da ya ba ya da ba ya da ba. Did yeah. it wrong? Ya ya ba da da ba ya slower. Da ya da bu da ba da bu da. There we go. I'll tab both of these out for you and for people at home. There you go. Okay. Okay. Both of those are really, really good patterns. Remember that you don't have to do all of them all the time. So they can be nice just to have yeah. in the case of the threes. You don't have yeah. to always think that it has to be this big Thing that's going everywhere they can be nice little um little segments and you'll find that it, because it's using your uh, legato technique in a practical way that should help that kind of form in other licks as well oh man are you making up a new lick Wait, is that not what you were doing no? Oh, when I did it faster? Yeah, isn't, yeah um, so, so. No, I went... I was doing threes. Right. So, are you That's just... it, and just those three. That's it. There's like a million different variants of these, aren't there? So I've got, that's what I've got to do is not... I've got to focus on those the, the, the three that you've just given and not... Um, you can really go can, into a little hole with these. Yes. Uh, and that can be quite a fun thing to do and quite yeah. a productive thing to do. But yeah. like I said, you're better off just picking As long a as couple. it's extracurricular and not instead of. <laughs> no, but even if you're doing it extracurricular, I would... My suggestion would be yeah. to pick these three and yeah. only work on those three yeah. for the next two weeks or a yeah. month even. Yeah. Get to know them because ideally what we want to do is not just have them here as well, right? Because right now we're just looking here, yeah. but we want to have it in, in pattern two, three, yeah. four, etc. So yeah, okay. don't do it yet though, again, like, Small bits that you can really use are going to be much more yeah. valuable than big bits that you don't remember. So yeah. work on those ones as a yeah. That's a it'd be a great starting yeah. point. And, and I think as well the the other thing I'm I am just generally noticing when playing is just you know the fingers get looser, the muscle memory gets mm -hmm. better. People sort of go you know you want to play a certain chord or a certain thing, and it, it just stuff gets easier to just. You know, your fingers are obviously getting more used yeah. to just following commands from the well, brain not, without having to it's, sort of... It's a pretty complicated thing when you think about what we're trying to do. Yeah. The, the, the motor skills involved yeah. with playing guitar are, are fairly complicated. And it is just the more you do it and the more your fingers find their own way to stuff. Yeah. You know, it's repetition. They, they just learn it. So yeah. Now, um, we mentioned just before we started rolling the cameras about these chords and chord extensions. Ah. And I just want to just explain <coughs> the principle to you so that you... Um, this is the bit for everybody who's watching this, by the way. This is, uh, we've now gone from, you know, relatively basic level, let's show Lisa, into a question I asked Justin just before uh, we started uh, <laughs> that um, even Pete didn't really, well, Pete probably did know the answer to it, I just couldn't be bothered to explain right. it. But uh, I... Should we give them the background as to, as to, and then you can yeah. go into it. Yeah, okay, so, so, yeah. Pete sent me an Instagram uh, link. So it was only a 60 second thing right. of a guy basically playing this A11. And I didn't even really know what an A11 right. chord was, but I can tell you, you know, it's got a root note of an A. Um, and the 11 is that one, isn't it? Yeah. So A11. And he said, and I'm just going to play 
D major over the top of it. And actually I did this loop where I was going. And you just play the you play your D major blue uh -huh. and it and it works. And I'm like going, wow. So I text Pete back and I'm going, so I don't understand how what how what's the relationship between um A eleven and D major, D major blues? And he's like he just went, It's magic. That was the text <laughs> message that I got back. So I just went, Do you know what? It's probably just as helpful. Yeah. Uh, right. and then I so I asked Justin the same question and uh Justin just went, Well, because uh and then you just literally went off on one in this like and I'm just like mind blown you know that you can just know that but right that's let, that's let, the context let me try it again and i'll i'll, yes. I'll slow it down because i did give you the rushed version yes because i wanted to save it for doing this but the so the first thing that you want to get is this idea of extensions yes and do you remember that a chord is built up of a root third and fifth do you remember um, that a triad chord is a, a root note a third note and a fifth note of a scale I mean, I remember us talking about it, I suppose, and I don't want to go off again, keep tangenting, but is that, is that, that's the rule for every single chord? Every single so chord. Every chord has the root, the, the third, third and the, the third fifth. and the fifth okay, of fine. a scale. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can treat the third and the fifth differently to get these like a minor chord or an augmented chord or a diminished chord or whatever. Okay. So if you take like a C chord, if you think the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, mm -hmm. if we have the, the root, the one will be a C. Yeah. And if we count, then D would be two, E would be three, and then F would be four, G would be five. So we'd have C, E, and G. That's it. If you play a regular C chord, yeah. uh, so the notes are C, E, G, C, and E. Yeah? It's all just Cs, Es, and Gs. Yeah. If you do a G chord... Oh... Uh, the notes in a G chord would be G, A, B, C, D. That's yep. G, B, D, G, B, D, G. Mm -hmm. they, they, it all follows the same thing. Yep. An E chord, you, we'd use the E major scale. So yep. it would be E, e. F sharp, G sharp, A, B. So we have yeah, E, B, and... B, E, G sharp, B, E. Okay, so it's a triad. Yeah, understood. You notice that it was... Play a note, the root, we missed the second, played the third, missed the fourth, played the fifth. If yeah. we continue that, we'd miss the sixth and then add the seven. Right. That's the next step up. So you'd have root, third, fifth, seven. Now, the seven, there's different types of seven chords that I'm sure you've heard of. You heard major seven, right. minor seven, yeah. and dominant seven. So and minor seven flat five, but we tend to, let's skip over that for now. Don't worry if it's too much of the theory. Don't, don't, don't no, I would, well, I was saying, because I yeah. always think, because I'm not great on, on even, um, you know, I mean, I have to say, even though I, I'm pretty confident that that is uh, E major 7. E major 7? Or just E7. Are they different? Uh, they can't, they're not, are they? <laughs> it's just E7. They are. Oh, are they? So, so E major 7 and E7 is different. Yes. So, oh, okay. This is the sound of a major 7 chord. <laughs> Right, and this is the sound of a dominant seventh chord. Very different, yeah. Dominant seventh is this, you know. So, so sorry, so there's no such thing as E is either dominant, major, or minor. There's no just E on its own. Yeah, well, E on its own is just E major. Like E without yeah. a seven or anything like that is just right. E major. So that's, that's E major. Fine. Right? We so always as soon as it becomes a seven, yeah. it has to be either major, dominant, or minor. Yes. Fine. But, is that e, the same but as E7 it? is dominant seventh. It's just, e, it's always written, if you see E7, you assume it's E dominant seventh. And if it's major seventh, it's specified. It'll be written E MAJ7 or E yeah. triangle seven. Yeah. Now, major seventh sounds uh, kind of, they're not so much used in rock. There's a really good example in Under the Bridge, where in the, after he's doing all the, uh, he goes, yeah. That's the sound of a major seventh yeah. chord, right? But that and that's almost a, like uh that's that's in there for effect, isn't it? It's yeah, not yeah, part yeah. of exactly. the sort of the melody as such. No, it's, it's the key it's, it's the it's the one chord of the key of the song. So it's not okay. like outside of the realm. Um yeah, so that's that's the sound of the major seven chord, right? Uh we've looked at the chords in the key before and mm -hmm. we've had that pattern. Do you remember what the pattern was? Major um, was on what chords? You were going to tattoo it on your hand? 
What, what do you mean, mate? I don't know. There are three chords, uh, three major chords in a key, and they were on chords. Oh, one. I see. Uh, well, it's major, minor. I have to. Yes, know, I yeah, yeah, come on. Uh, major, major, minor. minor. You got the two uh, major, major, minor. Is then you major, major, minor, minor, dominant. Forget dominant for now. Just the the. the what was the pattern of the, the chord sequence that we looked at? Yes? Yes, yeah, so it's major, minor, 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 minor major, 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 major uh, minor, minor again. That's uh, it, minor and then the funny seventh. And then the funny seventh, yeah, the okay. Ridiculous. Okay, so major, minor, minor, minor major, 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 minor. So it's the it's the, the four and the five, the, the one, the four and the five are the major chords. Are the majors, okay. Yeah. But the one and the four chord are major seventh chords. And the five chord is a dominant seventh chord. When you analyze the chords, if you build them up the same as we discovered that chord sequence yep. works and that all of the chords come from the same major scale. That's right. what we did. If you do my theory course at mm -hmm. some point and revise it, you'll... <laughs> <laughs> There's a theory course on this over on the website, which Lee was supposed to have done ages ago, but anyway. So, 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 so you're saying that, strictly speaking, yeah. the one that should be a seven? What? The, the well, you said you said the the, the the one and the four are the sevens, and the, the, no, the one and the four are the major sevens. Yes, and the dominant and the five chord is the dominant seventh. So you're playing you're playing a major yeah, seven. That's a major seven. Good. So we'd set that's the. If the we do it in the key of C, so let's okay, that, fine. so we'd have C major seven. So that's it. Good, and then we'd have D, the next chord in the key of C would be what? So it was major. Uh, minor. Minor. So we'd have minor seven. Lift off that finger. There you go. There's oh, okay, your, so, so major seven, minor seven, minor seven again. Now major seven, F major seven. That's it. G seven. seven. Oh, sorry. Uh, G seven. That's that. Uh, so here. That one. Yeah. That's it. Then A minor seven. Uh, B half diminished, which you don't know. Uh, and back to C seven. Yeah? Okay, fine. Uh, C major seven. So you can hear though that you can hear it sounds nice, right? If I just play those things in order. Here it sounds perfect together, yeah. And it's the those are all of the dominant the four note chords in the key of C. I call them quadrads. Mm -hmm. That's a, ma a name that I made up for them because it makes sense to me. Triads, quadrads, right? Whatever. But you won't find that in any other theory books. Um, so uh, that's the the next lineup of a chord extension. So we went from a triad, which is just yeah. where you have major or minor, or maybe yeah. augmented or diminished. If you wanted to get into fancy fancy theory, the next step up on that is seventh chords. Okay, yeah. and that was, we had that sequence, major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, seven, yeah. and then minor seven, minor seven, flat five, and back to the one again. So where we, what I was trying to explain to you with the 11th chord, yeah. when, you, when I said, oh, what is the, you know, what is the, that chord fundamentally? That idea of extending up by playing a note, missing a note, playing a note, missing a note, playing a note, missing a note, can, can, keeps going. Mm -hmm. So we have root, Miss the second, have the third. Mm -hmm. Miss the fourth, have the fifth. Miss the sixth, have the seventh. Mm -hmm. Miss the eighth, have the ninth. Yeah. Have you ever wondered when you see chords why you only see like E7, E9, E11, E13, but you never see E12 or E8? But you do see E sus4 sometimes. You do see E sus4, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. <laughs> well, just, but you, you don't see yeah. the 12 presumably because that's no. just the repeat of the right yeah the one isn't it but yeah i don't know why you wouldn't see an eight presumably because it doesn't sound very nice right uh, eight would be the one actually but it uh, oh, so, yeah sorry it, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay yeah that's, that's it doesn't it doesn't matter yes. yeah but it, the idea is that it, it's extending because we play a note miss a note play a note miss a note play a note miss a note play a note yeah. and, it, and we're just extend adding notes mm. to our foundation chord mm-hmm now, the reason that was important is because I want you to realize that you can always shrink a chord down to its basic seventh time. Mm. So if you see like a G13 chord and you don't know how to play a G13, you can always play G7. Mm -hmm. If you see a C11 chord and you don't know how to play a C11, you could play a C7. It always shrinks down. So 9s, 11s and 13s are further extensions away from that 7. But what you need to be aware of is the major sevenness, the minor sevenness, or the dominant seven. So it'll shrink back to one of those three. If you see a D minor 13, mm. what could you play instead that you might know? A D7. D minor seven. Because right. instead of yeah. minor 13, you could play minor seven. If you see a C major 13, mm -hmm. what could that boil down to? 
uh, a C major 7. C major 7. Okay? Any time you see those extensions, yeah. you can just knock the big number down, the 13, the 9 or the 11, down to a 7. Mm. Right? So, but, and it, it, just in terms of trying to... So if I wanted to play a C11, yeah. I'm looking for the... I'm looking to start the major scale, play 11 notes, and then... Yep. So Add that one, note two, in. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11. There. 11. Yeah. So... Yeah. 11. Right. So I've got... Which is also here. Yeah. So I've got it now... So a C11... A C11... Now, hang on. One, one second. C11 is yeah. a dominant type chord, right? Isn't it? Because it's C11 boils down to C, C7. C7. Right. So you'd need to start with a C7 chord and then add that note. So lift it off. Lift it off. That's that's oh, yeah, so that's, that's C7. The... That's C7. The other one's sorry, C sorry, major. Sorry, sorry, oh, are so, you yeah. playing C? Did you want to play C major 11 or C? I'm just 11? trying to work out where the where the 11. Yeah, that would be it. It's so, also a seven sus four in that particular case. But... <laughs> Just watching Honestly, his faces. I'm like... just literally Robert. Jo I'm just want to just, Robert Johnson for so much here. I'm going to sell myself okay. to the devil. Play a bit of blues. And... Right. The reason that I want to explain this to you and the point, right? Because it, 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 the reason that it's important to understand this boiling down, is because when you're playing rhythm guitar, when you're playing blues rhythm guitar, you want to have access to all of those dominant chords. Yeah. Right now. For you and the type of playing you do, I don't think that you need to know how to play a major 13 or a major 6 chord or a minor 13 or a minor 11 or whatever. Mm. Those You just don't need them. Yeah. But what would be really useful for you is to learn how to play a 7, a 9, 11 and a 13 yeah. because you can use them and they're not difficult. Yeah. You know, If you're playing a blues in A, instead of just having A7 like this, yeah. if you know that you can use this, which is an A9 chord, yeah. or this, which is a 13 chord, yeah. You can have yeah. There's all agree. of these things yeah. that are available options um, and just understanding that you can that you're not limited to just playing A7 like that or like that that you might know already that there's yeah. all of these other beautiful chords and the first step along that is to learn a couple of them. Yeah. Because you don't, what you don't want to do is suddenly go, well, I need to learn all of those 500 chords yeah. that Justin just smart assedly tried to fit into, yeah. cram into the one blues. Yeah. You're better off learning two. Yep. And I'm going to show you two okay. right now. I like and this. I want you to work on two. And we'll and then... come back to why the D major thing worked over the A11. No, we'll cop on that in a second. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I meant, as in after this. Yes. This chord is super cool. That is an A9 chord. Okay. Right? So we're not even there's the root note there, but we're not playing it. Right? So just don't play that string, but that's the root note of the chord. Have we got any A's in no, here? No, we don't. We don't, any we don't need one. <laughs> we don't need one. The bass player can play it. Okay. <laughs> so can I could I it you, does that yeah you could but it, it, there's no it's really, really difficult to do. Okay. So that's an A9. How do we make it into a D9? Uh, do I shove everything downwards, no. or do I just go up, up here? Up. Yeah. So, uh, so where's the root note? Where's the root? Where's the root? Here. Point to it. Good. Okay. So you're going to play that. Just give me like. Okay. Here we go. The start of blues. Stay there. So that's already a new chord that you can try and incorporate, and you don't have to use it all the time like that. You could use that one going to a D that you know, D7. How do you play D? Yeah? Uh, uh, sorry, D7? Uh, Whatever. What would you normally play on a D12? Okay, what's that chord? Uh, I, uh, uh, the, this like Jimi Hendrix chord without the little finger. Yeah. What is this chord? D. It's called uh, D9. D9. Look at this. Here's just a watch. I thought you just showed me a D. I thought I that did. was a nine. That's a nine. That's an A9. But watch this, Lee. Lee, watch for a second. Just watch and keep the ears open. Yeah. Here's a D a, a D9. Listen, yeah. just listening. Now listen again. Right, 
okay. It's the same chord. But here you can fit the root note yeah. on because it fits under the fingers. Fine. So it's a... That's an A9, that's it. So this is... Yeah, okay. it's, it's essentially the same thing Ooh. on a different set of strings. That's... Uh, uh, I'm now going... All right, okay. That's the one. That's a nice sounding chord, isn't it? It's a great sounding chord. And it, it moves really nicely to that one. That was the other one I was going to show you. I'm going to give you one more okay. now instead. But how, do, how nice does this sound if you do it like this? So you had a D7, D9. Yeah. You hear that all the time, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, so you, I'll learn the you, nine. So you I already know the nine yeah, there, you already but I'm know just going to do it here. You do. And I want to give you... A little job, which is how how many other ways can you play the D? If you're playing a blues in D, do you always play that ninth chord? Uh, well, what else or, might you or play? Or I might just you know I might play a um, regular or, D major. Yeah, okay. Regular D major. Uh, how else might I play it? Um, I don't know. Okay. Same, isn't it? It's just yeah. D major. Um, no, that's probably all I got. Okay. Just the two. I'm going to give you one more then. Okay. So. Bar with your first finger there, seventh fret, and then put your second finger down on the thinner string there. Oh. That's it. Again, it doesn't have the so root that's note. Another the root D. note's there. That's a D7. Yeah? And this is where we can start the advantage. So check this out. You might go like this. Yeah, okay, we're here. Right. So you can have A7, D9, A7, D7, Can you hear how it's starting to it's sound like cool. all cool, yeah, it's very funky, cool. jazzy stuff? Yes. And we've only learned two new chords. <laughs> That's it. A, good, D. Uh, two, let's go, here we go. From the A, two, three, four. A, D. A. Ah! Exactly what you should be practicing. Yeah. So you put on a backing track, yeah. and then you try. Yeah. When I'm practicing doing this, I put in far too many chords, and I often do it when I'm demonstrating to students as well. I'm using more chords than you really should, because uh, as a, as an example of what's possible, in the real world you don't want to go through to. Yeah, exactly. You've just figured out. There's the E. Good. Yeah. Okay. Or the A. There's the A like that down there as well. Now this one. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah? And that's a lovely, if you don't... Did you use that one before? I didn't, no. Because that one here, in this, when you're doing this... One. Yeah? I can absolutely... It's a fun little idea. I can absolutely... And that's that's... Again, right now, it's so brilliant because it's like it is like learning the guitar again. My fingers are just going into that uh, nine chord mm -hmm. one at a time at the moment. That's fine. Quite quickly, one at a time, but yes. still one at a time. And I've just got to. Yeah, there we go. I've got to just. And I, and this is taking me back to being fifteen years old and literally just going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's great. It's like. That's it. Did you do that with a metronome as well, just to sort of... I, I know. I prefer, when I was learning this chord sort of stuff, was just to do a blues. Because, did you see that little panic where you went, oh, oh, where's that chord? Yeah. That's fine, you'll do that a few times, but then you'll figure it out and you'll learn it in... I feel like in, the pressure of doing that can kind of help sometimes. I'm just checking my... Camera's away. That's it. Good. So here's what I propose, Lee. If you've learned these properly, each time we do a lesson, I'll give you yeah, a new chord, or a maybe new chord. two. Yes. And then see if we can... But you, you, what's really important is that you incorporate it in with the stuff that you know regularly, yeah. or they'll always remain detached. Right. Yeah, but I've got some lovely little chords yeah. I can show you to link these ones that you've learned and the gospel slides, and there's all sorts of funky stuff that we can get in there. But we definitely need to give you expand your chord vocab a little bit. Yeah. Now blow so, everyone's minds and just literally tell okay. them at the same speed that you went, well, it's because X. You know, it's like... So, Lee was playing this chord, which yeah. is an A11, and he's using the D major yeah, scale so I'll play over the, it. Because it just was okay. awesome. Well, 
Anyway, so I played that and I was like, oh, mind blown, because that sounds so cool. And it's not just a blues. Um, but I said, so I just went, well, so how does the D major scale, scale fit over an you know, A11 chord? Just why? Not right. even how, because it like musically obviously does. Yeah. It's like, just why? So A11 is, yes. can be boiled down to what chord? A7. A7. A7 occurs how many times? A dominant seventh chord occurs how many times in a key? Uh, yeah, I know you told me this like half an hour ago and I forgot. Yeah. I was going to say once. Once. Because yes. it goes major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, seven, yeah. minor seven, minor seven, flat five. Yeah. So if it only occurs once and it's occurring on the five chord, okay, right. major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, yeah. A7 has to be the five chord of what key? Oh, and then, so uh, D. D. So. <laughs> A, the a the reason that it works is because yeah. a seven is the fifth chord in the key of D. Yeah. Therefore, the D major scale fits perfectly over it. It's it, it is the perfect scale to play over it. If we were playing D major scale over an A chord, yeah. we'd call it a different name. Yes. To so that you and the the only reason really is to let people know where the notes are that you would stop on yeah. that sound call. Because if you just pl play that chord again, just to give you a groove on that. So if I play a D note, kind of sounds great. weird. It I wants to go. It. Yeah, but it's pulling yeah. there, isn't it? It wants to go. The notes that are yeah. really strong are the A, the C sharp, the, the A chord tones, and probably the extension, which is the D note in this particular case. It still wants to resolve to this, yeah. to the notes in A. So we call it a mixomatosis scale. Yeah, the mix, <laughs> a the mixomatosis code. The mixomatosis the code. mode code. So uh, when you're playing D major scale over that A7 chord, it happens to be called a mixolydian. But you don't even really need to worry about it. You can just think of it as being the D major scale. Now, why can I do the B and as long as we're... Is, or did, were you finding that the D, would you have naturally moved away from that D major scale over the B? Because I sort okay. of thought it sounded okay. But... Yeah, it sounds great. And I stayed on the D. Yeah. I didn't change, deliberately. But did, would you, was your brain going, ah, oh, I really should change? Or were you going, up? Oh, no, no, no. So, if it moves up to that other chord, what's the chord now? What's the, A B11. What, a B11. But what, okay, when we looked at it as a slash chord, it's a what chord with what bass note? Oh, I see. It says a B over a, a over B. A over a B. Yeah. Is A chord a major chord in the key of D? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. So right. all we've done, it's still now. It's almost like we've gone here. Think of it this way. Look, we've gone from A eleven to A. Right. And That's the, all. And, and, the, and, the B and then we've the just happened to put a, an incidental. Exactly. It's a, and it's a note in the scale anyway, so we didn't have to change. You could. And this particular chord is used a lot in kind of uh, disco-y sort Nile of Rogers, things. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. All, so all if you do this and change, because those two are in the same key, right? But if I'd gone, say, a semitone higher, if you'd gone from A, like that, to here, oh, then yeah. I would have had to have changed key. Yes. It, but you can hear it sounds. You can move it almost anywhere. Yeah. funky soul yeah. sound but yeah. as soon as you do that you you're having to change key and scale yeah yeah the mixolydian mode thing sounds great not just over these funky things but it you it happens in a blues as well and this is why it's so cool go back to playing an a7 just yeah. a regular, oh, no, regular a7 so. like uh, uh, but uh, but you're one no, of whatever new ones. whatever what, or do just let's to just to prove the point let's do this now i'll play d major scale again That is just that is just uh, that all those notes just in A 
all those notes are just, or most of those notes are in just an A blues. Okay, so aren't they? How many notes are there in a pentatonic scale? Five. How many notes are there in the major scale? Eight. Seven. Seven. Plus yes, that eight, would be eight. Seven. Okay, so if I'm playing the major scale, yeah. the major scale, or I'm yeah. playing A pentatonic, A pentatonic has five notes, so I've only had to add two notes in yeah. any way. Yeah. It's only added when you said, "Oh, most of those notes are in the pentatonic." I'm, yeah. yeah, they are. <laughs> There's only two additional ones that make it into uh, that funny mode thing, and we, we'll probably start exploring that. You know, hopefully so later weird, this, this year. Whole but you don't guitar tuition thing. It's like it's, it just it ebbs and flows through things that you just go. I'm sure this is much much simpler than I think it is. Versus all those different extensions you did of just going like, oh man, it's so much here's, more complicated than here's, I think it is. Here's the truth. <laughs> when you, so I think music theory is yeah. an absolute doddle. I think it's really, really, really simple. Yeah. I think of it almost like a bit of a ball of string, but where all of the bits are all connected to each other. And once you can see the ball, it's really simple. Cause it's like, oh yeah, it's just this. And you look at it from different angles or see it different ways. But until you've seen that whole thing, it's complicated. So you, you have to go through this yeah. fog of like, oh, there's this bit and there's these funny scales and there's these bits. But actually, the, it, it really is just, there's only seven notes. Well, well, I shouldn't say, there's 12 notes. And we pick different ones out of them to form different scales and different chords. But it's relatively simple, really, yeah. the, the end game. Yeah. Anyway, so your homework, Lee, yeah. is you've got, three pattern sequences to play around with. Yep. Okay, I will tab them out for you yep. and I'll pop it up on the internet uh, as soon as we finished our lesson. You've got two new chords to play around with to yep. try and incorporate. Uh, have a think about if, if there's any other chords that you know as well, dominant chords that you can use in blues. And we'll what we'll do over the coming weeks is just extend it out mm -hmm. so that you've got more and more. But mm -hmm. even if you make a little a pad, mm -hmm. a, a cord, you know, cord boxes, paper or whatever, print out a sheet you can print out off the website. Yep. Um, and then just write down all of the different ways that you can think of of playing A dominant. So A7, A9, A11, A13. The yep. ones that you know already. Yeah. Yeah? That would be a handy okay. thing to do. Uh, I've confused you with a little bit of modal speak and uh, diatonic harmony. Any time that you feel getting back on board on the music theory. Mm -hmm. I know we said that we're not going to do it, <laughs> but just keep it in mind that it really, once you've done it, and, mm -hmm. and it's like the notes on the fretboard, if you're into your guitar and you really want to take it forward, mm. it will, I promise you it will be so much easier if you know the notes on the fretboard yeah. and you remember the basic stuff like the notes and the keys and the foundation of a tri how a triad's formed and stuff like that. It just opens up the fretboard in a way that you'll never have until yeah. you do it. No, that's fair enough. And there's even like- I've, I've got to find my own, I've got to get no, no, there. No, on, no, no, I know, no, you have to get I, your I on to, your own. I, but I need to not be kicking and screaming, you know? Yeah, I no, need no, to, no, I need absolutely. To yeah, yeah. to go on that but journey, you, don't I? Um, I don't want you to, yeah, you do, but I want you to kind of, I don't want you to put a door up to it. Yeah. So I want you to leave the door open and you know that it, you can go and visit it at any time. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be like, now I'm going to do this and it's going to be all yeah. consuming for forever. You can dip into it and have a little bit of a look around, especially notes on the fretboard. Even the best guys know the, the, the don't know the theory and haven't learned yeah, that, still, still know the still notes know on the, the notes. It, It's kind of like, yeah. On any other instrument, you'd be considered a numpty if you didn't know what the notes are. If you played piano yeah. and you didn't know yeah, what yeah, the yeah. notes were, people would find that. It was easier weird. on a piano. It is a bit easier. Order. It it's is a like... bit easier on piano. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get it, but it's not that hard on guitar. It's not that hard. You just have to bucket. You just have to put. No, the you're, notes right. Down you're right. I mean, it's you know. and again, I don't run away, and it's not that I don't know what the notes are. I just can't go. It's it's just. If I'm in the middle of playing a chord and you said add a D, I'd right. just be like, oh, uh, it's, I think it's here, you know, it's right. or whatever it yeah. is. Like, anyway. So just yeah, it's a nice. A, I know it's not there. A the great way. thing, a great thing to be doing. There, there. If you've got this, the the, the chance when you're mm -hmm. practicing at home or at the office, and you yeah. just do it like you've got a couple of minutes, just grab your guitar, put your finger anywhere on the fretboard, and then name the note, and then yeah. move it somewhere else and name the note. Yeah. And you you might only do yeah. it your, that, every day that, a couple of you know, app that I've uh -huh. downloaded of yours is useful for that. Yeah. Um, it's great toilet practice. You yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. You know, you've got a couple of minutes or whatever, just 
you know, Absolutely. hammer out some notes. But, oh, it's um, good. It's does that, good, man. Yeah. yeah that should that be one. enough to keep yeah. you going, give you some yeah. new food. I don't want to bum you up with too much I, heavy stuff. I like stuff, my new cord. Yeah. you got two. What's the other new cord? Um, that one. There you go. Great. Or here. Because those ones are going to, yeah, there's going to be some really nice ways of linking all of these up together that we'll check out next time. All make sense? It does. Perfect. Okay. Bye-bye, Internet. Have yourself a lovely couple of weeks. Say bye-bye, Captain. Sorry, I'm, I'm no, engrossed. in there. In there. Look bye. at that little one over there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Bye-bye.